Hello and welcome to the Alliance for Democracies, The Populist Dialogues. Our program promotes progressive, populist perspectives on the issues of the day. The Alliance for Democracy is dedicated to ending corporate domination and creating a just society based on an equitable, sustainable economy. Our guest today is Floyd Jones, founding member of Friends of the Reservoirs here in Portland. She and the Friends of the Reservoir have worked for decades to preserve Portland's open water reservoirs and to save water ratepayers millions of dollars. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank right. you for having me. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, talk a little bit about Friends of the Reservoir. What was the what was the reason for the formation of the group? Well, we got involved in 2002 when the city was proposing to demolish the historic open reservoirs at Mount Tabor and bury underground tanks there. Uh, but it didn't take us long to um, see that our entire system is very well connected. You know, open reservoirs. Uh, uh, protect us from disinfection byproducts and cancer-causing nitrification that occurs in covered reservoirs, but we uh, were quick to see that the city had these larger plans. They wanted to eliminate open reservoirs. Corporations who'd been involved in um, outlining all of the projects, which the Water Bureau has followed basically for a 25-year period, they had visions of not only burying reservoirs, but building all these treatment plants that uh, would introduce chemicals. So we've been working for 16 years on trying to preserve our open reservoirs. We obviously haven't been <laughs> successful in the end, uh, but now the big fight is over uh, building a chemical adding filtration plant okay. for our Bull Run water system. Right. And so in those, what, 16, 17 years, the city now has no open reservoirs that are used for, for, for storing water, yes. uh, and we have covered reservoirs. Yes. Talk just for a moment about the problems of covered reservoirs. Well, there are a lot of problems. As I said, the open reservoirs, they get the natural UV light and disinfection byproducts that are a part of the treatment process. Those are dissipated through the open reservoirs. And during the periods when we use the lower quality Columbia South Shore well field as a backup, uh, we're getting radon, naturally occurring radon from the well fields. That used to vent through the open reservoirs. But now that we don't have those, think about that. Every time you use water in your home to take a shower, cook, um, you know, drink water, you've got, the, and they're using the well field, now you have radon oh. floating through the air in your home. So they served a lot of great purposes, and plus they were cleaned twice a year, so anything that would get into the reservoirs would be removed. Now, with just buried tanks over at Powell Butte, and they're gonna, uh, bury a tank, a tiny little tank up at Washington Park, demolishing two of the city's uh, most significant historic resources. Um, now, those tanks aren't cleaned uh, but for every five years or seven years. And there are openings and pipes throughout the system, so when a rat gets in that tank, it's there for five to seven years, rotting away. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. not All good. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so the reservoirs which are in Washington Park, those are going away entirely. They're 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 demolishing. They're going now already. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. I've been there for a while. Yeah, actually, and it's really sad because um, they're they've been demonstrating for the last three or four years that in fact we really didn't need the storage there at Washington Park. Mm -hmm. um, they, they haven't been used for drinking water for three or four years, and oh. it's going to take them three or four more years to build this tiny tank there at the cost of $190 million. Well, wow. it's, Yeah, it's unimaginable. If you talk to utilities, say, in Rochester, New York, where they're keeping their older historic open reservoirs, they're just flabbergasted when I tell them the cost of these projects. They're going to keep their reservoirs and they're going to comply with this EPA rule and spend but $22 million. In Portland, they've spent $440 million to reduce in-town storage mm -hmm. by 50 million gallons. It's really shameful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, Portland, Portland Water Bureau has been really, really, one thing that they do really well is spend a lot of money. That's right. With every project, um, 
they come up with the most expensive way of managing that project. And many of the projects, of course, we don't believe needed to be built in the first place, mm -hmm. new infrastructure. Uh, but they find that that's much more fun than uh, spending their time and energy on maintenance. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So the, the most recent proposal is uh, is about building a filtration or a, fil or, or a treatment plant. Yes, yeah, so uh, the public may recall that this uh, winter and spring, the Water Bureau re reported and the media reported, um, the conventional media repeatedly reported that there were these cryptosporidium detects. Well, what they failed to report was uh, that there's no evidence that those were the infectious species of cryptosporidium. The majority of cryptosporidium species are harmless. Mm -hmm. Yet they repeatedly reported that and uh, we had a variance from this federal regulation um, that came about when a filtration plant, costly state-of-the-art filtration plant in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, allowed infectious species of cryptosporidium to go through their plant and cause illness and death. Oh, okay, so the plant allowed the infectious scripto to go through the plant when in fact that was what the treatment plant was supposed to stop. That's right. Okay. That's right. Um, and it, there was there were big rain events too. So one of the arguments you'll hear the Water Bureau make is, oh, this will help us with turbidity. Well, if there's a, a, a large turbidity event, no, it won't. And again, in this Milwaukee, Wisconsin, that's what happened. A large turbidity event, human and cow sewage, they have a highly unprotected watershed. We have a federally protected watershed, the only one in the nation, a very unique, elegant, green system. You know, it's been the pride of Portland for mm -hmm. all these years. And so now the Water Bureau, uh, well, they've been working on this back room for many, many years, many decades, but um, they, they got city council to actually vote during the summertime when everyone's out of town, no one knows what's going on, and they voted to support building a chemical adding filtration plant on August 2nd was the vote. Uh -huh. Okay, and, and, and they had two options that were presented. Yes, well actually there were three, we right. didn't really like any of them, but um, they'd already spent $16 million designing a UV radiation treatment plant. So that was on the books, yet um, they used, uh, you know, some of their political cohorts. They have a new, they call it a, a Portland Utility Board. So they had a couple of meetings with these folks, several of whom who had, uh, had only been to one or two meetings, one or two meetings. Oh. So new to all of these issues, they used that board. Um, they used the Multnomah County Public Health Officer to say there would be more benefits uh, by building a c filtration plant than UV. So we were wasting this $16 million. We, we didn't like UV because it introduces mercury to our system, but compared to filtration, if you had to waste money, and that's what this is all about, wasting money, let's waste the least amount. That would have been $100 million and the filtration plant could be upwards of $500 million. $500 million, okay. And they've already spent, you said, $400 million. On the reservoirs. On the reservoirs, okay. Yes. And um, I, I, I wonder how much, if we went back to the uh, beginning of the formation of your organization, I wonder how much money they have spent um, oh. pursuing this. <laughs> yes, an incredible amount of money. And, you know, in the beginning, of course, no one in the public knew that the Water Bureau actually worked on crafting this regulation. It was only through public records requests that we uh, came to see that they had sent their revolving door consultant, who's now, he's been a revolving door consultant for 20 years. Mm -hmm. They sent him back to Washington, D.C. with a Water Bureau employee to sit on a committee to help craft this regulation because... And this was, the e this was an EPA. EPA. Right. It right. was, and it was the result of this filtration plant failure in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That was the impetus, that was the basis for this regulation. And, and sadly, over the years, even though there's been all this new research that shows that all of EPA's estimates of problems they were going to avert have been wrong. Oh. Their modeling has proven wrong city after city across the country. Unless you have human activity 
or domesticated animals in your watershed, uh, you're not going to find infectious cryptosporidium. All of the significant events have involved human activity or domesticated uh, animals like Baker City, the Water Bureau will bring that up. Well, sadly, they had cows in their watershed. We don't. Ours is a protected watershed, and it's just a, a very sad thing because we're going to create problems with a chemical filtration plant, not mm -hmm. uh, protect our water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and so, so talk talk about those problems. What, what problems will we be creating? Well, for one, we've we've um, you know had this minimally treated system all these years, 125 years. Uh, never has there been any public health problems associated with Bull Run water. And now we're going to be adding all these chemicals, depending on which type of filtration plant they add. It's very likely they're going to add aluminum, alum, acrylamide, all of these polymers. And how are you going to avoid that? Mm -hmm. So uh, several of those are known to be cancer causing. We already have the radon from the well field when we use that. And um, then it creates the risk. People are going to say, well, you have uh, a filtration plant. Why do we need all these uh, protections for Bull Run that people had worked so hard to get through Congress, mm -hmm. you know, to keep all kinds of human activity out? We, uh, you know, that'll increase the risk of fire. You know, they say, oh, a filtration plant will help us with fire. But in cities like Denver, where they had a massive fire, the filtration plant has to shut down, so it's rendered useless. Mm. And, and it's human activity um, that causes, generally causes fire. Um, and, and again, the sources of actual harmful contaminants come from human activity. So you're risking, you're, you're introducing chemicals, you're greatly increasing the cost to consumers, and then you're risking uh, all of these protections that are in place that make our water so great. And the water is going to change in taste negatively. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are very few places around the country where you can go and have delicious water from the tap. And yeah. those are the unfiltered systems, the large unfiltered systems, mm -hmm. New York, San Francisco, Seattle, Boston, and the best, Portland. Uh-huh, okay, yeah, hey, hey, and, and so with all the breweries here in Portland, I presume that they're not uh, liking this very well. They are not. Um, you know, there was a hearing similar to, not similar, but this issue was actually uh, brought to the forefront a bit in 2009, and um, they were adamantly against this, and I know the Water Bureau has said they'll try and work with them and make some changes for them, but it affects, you know, restaurants, anyone who uses water. I mean, we, you know, it's essential to life. Mm -hmm. You're cooking at home, your water's going to smell different, it's going to taste different. Yes, the breweries are going to be greatly impacted. I mean, their beer is going to taste different mm -hmm. after this. Yeah, yeah, and I, I've, I've lived here all my life and I love yes. the water and I always yes. hate the water everywhere else I yes. go. Yes, yes. And uh, I guess I get need to get used to hating the water here too. Uh, that, that's very disappointing. You're paying a massive yeah. uh, amount for, uh, you know, bad tasting water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, What's what's the what's the modern history of for the Water Bureau with regard to maintaining Bull Run water system? Well, um, you know, I, I, there are, the protections are what really protect our uh, Bull Run, but unfortunately, the Water Bureau has, has spent much of their energy over the last twenty years focused on building new infrastructure. I mean, there's a lot that needs to be done in terms of maintenance, and that, that's been our complaint over the last 16 years. Um, I recall going to a meeting in 2004 with the then administrator, uh, Mort Anushirvani, and they were trying to sell all these same projects, burying reservoirs, building chemical filtration or UV radiation, and all the Water Bureau employees waiting for the meeting to start were lamenting that they'd just come back from a conference and everyone else was having fun building all these great projects and here we have this simple system and you know they're just frustrated they couldn't be building. Because the engineers, that's what the yes, engineers that's, do. Yes, that's exactly right. what uh -huh. engineers right. do and at the end of the meeting I asked Mort, I said, why is it, you know, the auditor has written this report, the scaling, uh, scathing report that you're not taking care of maintenance and why are there so many of these uh, consultant contracts and his answer has been 
to me the most truthful through all these years, and that is that designing a building is glamorous and maintenance is boring. And so thus the focus on building all these new projects. And you've seen since 2000, um, oh, I would say about six or seven, our, our water rates have skyrocketed yeah. every year. They started out with a 17.4% increase and then a, you know, eight or nine percent year after year after year. And our water is no safer than it was. We had, we mm -hmm. always had safe water. Uh, we just didn't have the radon coming into our home. We had, didn't have the disinfection byproducts. Um, you know, so our our message has always been: you need to be focusing focusing on taking care of what we have, mm -hmm. taking care of our system, not building new mm -hmm. new okay. infrastructure. Uh, right, yeah. um, what 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 is your feelings about this? Uh, I, I don't know if they've possibly even started it, this pipeline they were going to do under the Willamette River to get water to the other side. Right. But what, what, what? Well, that was initially that was that initially came from um, the interest of wholesale cu customers. Um, they they wanted to have a new pipeline. Some of them have already left our system, like Tigard. You know, have developed their own uh, alternative water sources. We already have seven pipes under the Willamette River. Oh. So the idea that every single one of them will fail, that's their argument, that we don't have any that are earthquake prone. And, and that's their new strategy. One of their new strategies is we say the words resiliency, we get a hundred million dollars, uh -huh. you know. And so <laughs> <laughs> every year we just say resiliency, resiliency, and um, so uh, it, it'll be interesting to see if they're going to pursue that now as vigorously now that um, you know they're going to be spending hundreds of millions of dollars uh, to add chemicals to our water. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. well, it, it, it would appear that as long as they can add it to the ratepayers and have the ratepayers um, uh, pay for it. Oh, uh, they don't really care about cost. That's right, and it's, it's just so easy to do. I mean, I, you've, you, they've suggested, oh, well, you won't see a rate increase this year or maybe not next year for this. Well, that's absolutely not true. They raise water and base rates. People ignore that piece of it, but they raise them 6.7% in May. Oh. So on your very next bill, which you'll get in September, and everybody will say, oh, well, you used a lot of water because it was warm, hot this summer. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true, too, but they also increase increase that and every year they raise that base charge as well uh -huh. and you know I think uh, after you know 12 15 years of rain increases people are ready for water rates to go down the other um, perverse uh, or the disincentive for council to pay attention to ratepayers is that every time they raise your water and sewer rates they uh, get a utility license fee, you know, it's 5%. So they're oh. happy to see your rates go up because then they get more money for the general fund. Oh, oh okay, all right, okay. Uh, so a little corruption there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit, right, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, and so, I mean, it, uh, the uh, uh, our, our form of government really works against us because you don't have a whole team you know, focusing on the Water Bureau really, even the commissioner in charge really mm -hmm. pays very little attention. Um, uh, who would that commissioner be? Well, right now it's Nick Fish. Nick Fish, right now, okay. Uh, it seems like he's been commissioner f for water for quite some time. Well, he has since uh, Randy Leonard left. Uh -huh. uh, the big spending actually did start with Randy Leonard. Uh, yes, right. Uh, yes. And, and of course, he built that house. The w oh, the well, the well, there was so much <laughs> illegal spending. Yes. Uh, yeah, right, mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Right, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, what was the, um, what was the reason? What was the reason for the rush? Well, there is no reason for the brush. That's that's another argument from the community is uh, because they had these detects in March, and again the I'm water sorry, these what these detects of cr cryptosporidium, oh, okay. you know, in February and March. Well, um, the Water Bureau kept pretty quiet about that, and if you go back and look, you'll see that Nick Fish said, "Oh, we're a long way from talking about any treatment plant." Well, that's absolutely not true because they sent a report to the Oregon Health Authority, and I I can't imagine that their commissioner did not know that they were sending that and. 
the basic message of that message of that report was we can no longer meet the criteria of this it's, it's called a variance mm -hmm. and so they knew that OHA was going to come back and say we're going to revoke your variance and so it wasn't a rush they had between Jan they could have waited until next January to submit that uh, and, and they uh, submitted uh, it right away yeah and, and if they had waited they and had continued testing then they probably would not have reached that threshold. They claim that wouldn't. They claim they couldn't do that. They that they could not have tested enough water to get it below the f threshold. But the the real issue is that there is no other utility in the entire nation who understood this rule better than they did. And what they failed to do year after year after year is they've never submitted any substantive comments to the EPA against the the way this regulation has was established because it was flawed from the start. EPA doesn't distinguish between harmless and harmful cryptosporidium species. And that's really the crux of the problem. Mm -hmm. Nick Fish has said to his, his utility board, oh, that's uh, splitting hairs. How is that splitting hairs? That's the basic science that's the of basic this. Science, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so they've known all along. And yet other utilities like New York and Actually, all the unfiltereds have all always made complaints about this, as had um, the American Water Works Association, which represents 3,200 utilities. So everyone but the Portland Water Bureau, who is actually involved in crafting this rule, has really fought against that piece. And um, so it's really just been a setup. This is what they've needed all along to fulfill what the corporations have asked for. Um, for decades. I mean, the same corporations, the same revolving door consultants were involved in crafting the rule and they've been the beneficiaries of this regulation every step of the way. Yeah. I, I, I wish we could uh, bring this to the public's attention. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. it, it has, I mean, you have done an excellent, excellent job with bird dogging this for years yeah. and years, um, but it has been impossible to let the public know. Uh, about some of these basic details. Yes, uh, yes, and, and I don't know if you saw the Oregonian editorial. I mean, it, it suggested that we had found toxic cryptosporidium. I oh. mean, it was just absolutely false, and the Water Bureau does nothing to correct them. And even the public health officer, Paul Lewis, for the Tri-County Public Health Office, he said to City Council, well, this is awkward to tell you, you know, that there's no evidence that there was any disease from this. How is that awkward? You need Why? to be awkward. <laughs> That's what it takes. <laughs> right, right. But I mean, all along, he'd kind of kept quiet as it was out there uh -huh. in the media, you know, and we'd write editorial or opinion pieces to the Oregonian, no, Nothing. they weren't published, mm -hmm. of course. Right. And uh, even after an editorial was published in the Tribune, then we still had the reporter saying the same thing. People die and get sick. Yes, if you have infectious species, but not the species we're finding yeah, here. Uh -huh, right, yeah. So at, at this point in time, is there anything that Portland residents and ratepayers can do, say, to influence this decision to change the city council's mind? Well, you know, they, they made this decision without any public input, and they are planning a PR campaign, which is sad. I'm sure, again, they won't make the differentiation between species. But, you know, the mayor, when he was running for office, um, when he was campaigning in a debate, he said, I, the city should have fought harder for the open reservoirs. And so, well, now you are the mayor, mm -hmm. and why aren't you f fighting for our bull run system to protect the great water that we have? I mean, at the end of the council session in, in uh, August, on August 2nd, Second, he said, "This is sad." Well, it doesn't need to be sad. I mean, they didn't consider any of the alternative compliance options. The Water Bureau says, "Oh, they're not available," but that's not true. New York got a deferral on um, on their his, their open reservoir until 2034, and this was after they detected cryptosporidium. Mm -hmm. um, but yet, the Water Bureau doesn't want them to fight this. So, you know. The mayor should be a leader, and mm -hmm. uh, at this point, they need to go back and revisit this with a meaningful public engagement process. So, yeah. what um, what did Chloe Udali, you know, our, our newest city commissioner, say? Uh, well, 
she just acted as though you know here we are we need to do this she didn't really didn't have much much to say we asked to meet with her uh -huh. we never had that opportunity um and uh, Amanda Fritz, mm -hmm. our, our other right. hero yeah. <laughs> on the council. Yeah, um, you know, she's pretty much deferred. Deferred, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, so it's it's kind of a, a silo thing again on it the is. city council. It is, okay. very much so. So, you know, if we could eliminate the commissioner form of government, I, you know, it's sad that I heard Nick or uh, Steve Novick after he left office has been advocating yes. for th that. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's been an issue for decades. It, it, it has, it has. And unfortunately, we've run out of time, so. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much for being here. Yes. All right. All right. So we've been talking with Floyd Jones with Friends of the Reservoirs here in Portland. If you want to help now with stopping the unneeded treatment plant, call or write Mayor Ted Wheeler to tell him you do not support building a chemical adding filtration plant. Ask that City Council reverse course to protect the purity of Bull Run water and lower water bills. Mayor Ted Wheeler's contact information is on the screen now. We'll keep it there for, for, for a little bit so you can uh, jot that information down and contact him right away. Don't forget that the renegotiations of NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, have begun. We have reason to believe that the Trump administration just wants to update the agreement by adding various provisions of the rejected Trans-Pacific Partnership. We need more than that. What should we, the people, expect? What we should expect is the elimination, complete elimination of the investor state dispute settlement provisions, which have undermined democratic decision making in the past. We need stronger and enforceable labor, environmental and public health standards in the agreement itself. And we need to be able to, buy, able to have important by American and by local procurement pre, uh, preferences. Without these, we don't need a renegotiated NAFTA. Learn more about this issue and um, uh, sign a petition on the Portland Alliance for Democracy website at www.afd-pdx.org. Have you missed one of our programs? Want to watch, watch it again or suggest it to friends? Well, you can do that as all our Populist Dialogues programs are saved to our webpage. Visit www.populistdialogues.org to view past programs or when viewing a program to sign on to our YouTube Populist Dialogues channel to receive notification when a new program is added. Thank you for watching. I hope we'll see you again next week. Bye.